Okay, so this is an update on the uh, Hasbro 29-inch Millennium Falcon conversion that I've been working on. And um, if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, um, these are all of the Shapeway components um, that I purchased that I'm uh, fitting into the actual Falcon. So this is obviously the cockpit assembly. Um, this all comes together. I think the door is sold separately. And uh, there's basically three areas I want to talk about within this specific video let you know some of the uh, the decisions that I've made, some of the progress that I have here, and then um, also if anybody has any comments or suggestions along the way, you know, I'd love to hear them in the comments section down below as far as anything that may have worked well for you. So what I'm going to talk about in this specific video is going to be the door itself um, and how it impacts the lighting. And then I'm going to talk about the, uh, the backlight, the backlit areas here. Uh, what I'm doing, um, what's still to come, and what's in, in progress right now, and then I'm going to talk about the, the console up front, okay? So first of all, as it relates to the door, um, this is sold separately. It's I believe it is. Um, I bought so many pieces from them, it's hard to remember what's what. But I believe that it was sold separately, and one of the things about the door is that... Um, I think the reason why it was sold separately was because there's some people that elect to leave the door off if they have a hallway that they've have put in behind it so they want to sort of make that available or accessible to view. Um, in this case I'm not doing any of the hallway sections so I've put the door on. Now if you've seen some of the other videos I'm doing a lot of lighting within the Falcon itself and some of the most powerful lights that uh, rest underneath the hood are going to be the engine lights. And the concern I have with the engine lights is that they're going to be so bright, even though they're facing the opposite direction, there's definitely going to be some light spill that can come through. Now, the door itself did not fit exactly. Um, I mean, it wasn't, it, there was some spillage of light coming through. So what I did in that specific instance was, is that I took a piece of styrene and uh, I colored it the same color as the door. And it was probably about the same dimensions as the uh, the entire border here, and I just had put it over the back part and uh, covered that up. Then I put the door in. This isn't even glued in. It just snapped that hard. Uh, it just fixed itself right in there. Now, again, even though it's a tight fit, um, there was still some spillage off to the side. So that'll fix that issue. Now, what I'm hoping for is that I'm hoping that the engines do provide enough light coming through because of these areas here. And uh, this piece is originally uh, this same, if you haven't seen the 3D uh, parts by Shapeways, they're all frosted like this. So what I did was when I painted this, I used a uh, liquid mask and I basically covered these areas here. So knowing that I wanted to have this backlit somehow, that um, these would illuminate because they are what you see in the Millennium Falcon cockpit if you look at the movie version. Uh, there's light bars back there. So what I'm hoping for is that the engines will actually produce enough light internally and then that'll bounce back um, in here. Not sure if that's going to be the case, but I'm hoping that that's the case and can illuminate or provide me enough illumination here. Plan B is, is that I'll put an LED back here. Okay. I'm hoping that I don't have to, um, but if I do, that's fine. I'll put an LED back there. So one of the other things to note is, is that in a previous video I said I was going to try and stay away from fiber optics. That really didn't work out too well. I, I looked at a couple of different sources of things that I can do and uh, I decided that, you know what, it's just the easiest way to go ahead and do this. Now one thing I want to share with you here is, is that um, when you look at the Shapeways components of what you're seeing here is that it comes with pre-drilled holes and what I'm actually able to fit in there is 0 0.50 millimeter uh, fiber optic cables, which these are that size. And then there's also smaller ones for 0.25 millimeter uh, fiber optic cables. Now, um, one thing I'm, I'm not going to do all of the holes, and again, using that same backlighting, whether or not it's an LED here or from the engines, I'd like to get some natural light coming through, at least some, some light that make it, these look a little bit more white. Uh, so then that way I don't have to have everything as colors because, you know, it's going to just, it kind of looks a little bit ridiculous now. It looks okay when you turn it on, but I don't want to get so many colors. I'd like to have a lot of white in there too, so white fill light coming through. So that is definitely in the plan. Um, one thing to mention, which I think is very important, is if you have any fiber optic cable, um, you know, you can go ahead and paint it. But I, I've actually picked this up on eBay, and I'll just share this with you here, is, is that 
I paid uh, $10.99 for this and this is a hundred and fifty feet of fiber optic cable that I purchased and they came in 24 inch strips and this has basically been cut down to 12 inches so I cut them in half so I use them up and um, they are painted so it looks like you know there's some sort of a I don't know if it's an oil based paint or whatnot but they, they are painted these specific colors are technically the colors of the rainbow if I, I venture to guess everything I have here um, you know and it also came with the the um, the light the light fixture for this to, to light these up so I would just say that you know for the time it would take to do all of this even if you own fiber optic cable you want to cut this up yourself for 10.99 is pretty much worth it just to go ahead and buy this and I bought this in both like I said the um, the 0 0.50 millimeter and also the 0.25 millimeter um, so I can put this in now the other thing I also did was and this makes it extremely easy is as it relates to the fiber optic itself is um, you know I did the uh, the mushrooming effect so um, that's where you basically take the a lighter or a heat source and you just hold it close to the um, to the actual fiber optic itself and you can see that you get a bit of this mushrooming effect and what's great about this is in this specific instance as you can see that once you pull the wire through that it stops once it hits the surface because it can't go any further okay so it's been really beneficial one of the things I'll also be doing it helps out in the gluing process is because I'm going to you know pull these all out and then basically once they've all been pulled out and, and are, are flush I'll start gluing this down. Don't know what kind of glue I'm going to use yet. There's a lot of different recommendations on the net um, as to what you should be doing when you're gluing fiber cables to in, in modeling. So I'll figure something out um, and then put that in there. So finally, the last component here is the uh, console itself. And one of the things you'll note with the console is is that it doesn't have any drill holes like the back section did. Okay. So what this actually does is that um, the, it has beveled controls, okay, so you can see here some buttons that are beveled. And, um, and one of the things that um, I did was I used liquid mask again on these, and I used about uh, three passes of that. So when it dried, I did it three times. And um, then again, those are frosted. So when you look underneath, here I covered this up when I was painting and then you can see that the uh, when I remove the mask um, it's actually you can see the the controls uh, shining through there so this fits uh, you can fit in a, um, a five millimeter LED so I'm getting a flashing when I used one for now that flashes but I'm not particularly happy with it but um, you can see how that that sort of looks it, it flashes um, it does like a slow pulse then it does a um, a quick a quick blink, and I and I really don't like the quick blinking. Um, it's good for controls, maybe on the back, but not for this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one that just does a repetition of just slow pulse changes on that, and maybe not so many colors. So it's very very easy uh, to fit that in there, and of course you can see that the wiring can go through here at the very bottom. Okay, so that makes it very very easy. And then the other thing was is that I've also, I don't know if you can see this, but underneath here, what I did was is that I didn't, I didn't paint the bottoms of these panels up here just to let some of the light come through because what I wanted to do was sort of give some accent lighting on the bottom here, you know, so when, when the, the lights are, I mean, I know that there's lights that are coming through here, which are pretty bright. We'll see. Um, if I don't like the accent lighting, I can always uh, paint it. Another thing that you can do, which is really useful, is that if you are not, don't have a steady hand, um, you know, if you if you paint over some of these items and you want to un unveil them again, you can you can just scratch away at this with a, an exacto blade, and uh, it comes off pretty good. So that that's an easy way to do all that. So ultimately, uh, my next plans with respect to the the fiber that you're seeing here is to just do a couple of more. Um, and then, so what's basically going to be happening here is, is that I've got the blinky lights underneath here. Uh, I've got the fibers that um, are here right now that I'm going to plug in just a few that are going to blink, not too many. Uh, just one or two or three or four, just not, not too many spread out that are going to just have some, some uh, flashing lights. 
And then of course I need to determine how my backlight's going to be coming through so I have to do an engine test and uh, if the engine's not going to do it for me then I'll do a uh, um, I'll do a bit of a uh, uh, some sort of an LED back there. I don't know how many if it's going to be one bulb or several or whatnot. So we'll figure that out. And then once I get that, the next video will basically show uh, the seats, the figurines, the cone. Every, and I'll try and place it within the actual uh, cockpit itself, the the actual uh, housing of the uh, the rest of the the Falcon. We'll see how that comes together, but in the meantime, I just wanted to share some of that progress so you can see how everything has come together so far. Again, always love to hear from people as far as um, techniques that they've used. Uh, if you have any questions below in, in the comments, I'll be happy to respond to them. And uh, if you have anything that you want to share for from based on your own experiences, love to hear that too, and I'm sure the other people that are watching this video would appreciate that as well. Thanks very much, and we'll see you in the next video.